All right, everyone. Welcome to this weekly Sidereal Astrology Forecast. So this is for May 29th through the 4th of June, 2017, and we do have a lot uh, going on this week. Let me go ahead and show you the transit graph so you can see what I mean. Definitely above average here in terms of the number of aspects we've got. So I'm going to break this down as simply as possible. Um, of course, we are using the actual size of the constellations here. Um, so if you are new to the channel, you definitely want to check out the link down below. Um, describing this system and to make sure you're watching this video for the right sign because uh, after this we are going to get into the individual signs. So let's first look at this collectively and see what's going on generally this week. Um, as a backdrop, this week is the first quarter phase of the lunar cycle, uh, which means last week we had a new moon. And last week with the new moon, there was likely some new beginnings collectively uh, in the constellation of Taurus, which was about our values and cultivating our values in life and taking a slow and steady approach to life. You know, making sure one foot is firmly placed before we take the next step. So um, that's still continuing and the first quarter phase is about challenging ourselves uh, towards whatever new beginnings um, has started to shift into your life since later last week or maybe last weekend. So what action steps can you take? Uh, what steps just generally like challenging yourself uh, to take and implement here this week, I think can go excellent. Now, uh, with that being said, all of these aspects does suggest that there is likely collectively a lot of things sh shifting this week generally. Um, kicking off the week on Monday, Mars opposite up to Saturn. So this we were feeling last Sunday as well leading into this week. And uh, this is all about this very, pa this, this needing of patience, really. Uh, Mars is the aspect of ourself that wants things now. And Saturn is the aspect of ourself that wants to make sure everything is done patiently and correctly and for the long term, you know, so it's built solidly and grounded. Uh, so there's a, you know, with oppositions, it's usually a bit of, you know, balance needed that there's these two different aspects of the self needing to combine, needing to synergize. And what I think this is about coming into the week is about patience, right? Still having our short term goals right? Still being direct, taking action. You know, that Mars is in Taurus. And so, you know, we'll be all week is going to be shifting into Gemini this weekend, but all week still in Taurus, just about taking action towards those values. However, with that, uh, seeing the big picture, all right, seeing the big picture, because this is a cycle that involves a two and a half year cycle that started about a year and a quarter ago. So early 2016, if you feel like anything since the beginning of 2016 that you knew was going to take some time and you're going to be patient with and build towards, uh, this is now the halfway point. And with the halfway point, it's about continuing to see the big picture, right? But yet shift and, and start to take some action because with this aspect, we could come into this week with some sort of awareness about how we can take some long-term actions that may take some time still as we continue with this two and a half year cycle. Uh, towards anything that we are motivated towards or again anything that we do value in life with Mars and Taurus So great for doing a status check great for being patient yet taking action and uh, Just being balanced with those two aspects of ourselves there The short-term goals with the long-term goals. All right, so that's coming into the week and then as we go into here Tuesday and Wednesday uh, that Mars then sextiles up to Uranus and we'll be feeling this a little bit as we shift into Tuesday in fact Which is a very easy aspect to that Mars. So what I feel like is this status check is a little easier than normal Because first of all you have Uranus sextiling Mars during it, but right after it There's this sort of shift of freedom of seeing that there's maybe some sort of opening or we're a bit more willing to uh, make some changes or, or to rather take some actions that are in alignment with our freedom with what we're truly about and this can feel very freeing in fact this can give us a bit of confidence a bit of boost of insight sometimes with Uranus it can be very intuitive and all in all just feeling a bit liberated sort of it's a slight aspect it's not a major one but the sort of opportunity for liberation of continuing to take action towards those values in a way that we feel like is freeing and we're open to mixing things up and changing things so that, you know, we have more freedom in our life and our life and our actions are more of an expression of what we're truly about. 
All right, so a little bit of freedom there. And then as we get into here, Wednesday in particular, uh, Mercury trines up to Pluto. So with all this more active stuff relating to active things, rather, this coming into the week about our motivations, about our drives, here around Wednesday, there's now a shift to our minds, our mental perspectives, or we could be very deep, in fact, in the way we're thinking about things. And this is a very supportive aspect. You've got Pluto, the planet of transformation and change, in a very supportive aspect to our minds, Mercury, even to our communications as well. We can not only be thinking deeply and be able to see things that we may have not otherwise seen because we're willing to, to see things deeply, but also to communicate things deeply as well, right? And just really cut down to the matter right? Cut down to the real raw truth of the matter, whether it's through your work, relationships, whatever the area will be. Again, we'll look at this specifically for the signs next. But generally, we're willing to pierce the veil to get down to the heart of the matter and think about it, work with it. Could even be your routine as well, right? Making changes to that routine because we're willing to see the deeper perspective on things. All right, so that's great. And that could also bring some insights, but I think mostly just a change of perspective, a shift of perspective taking place around Wednesday. Now, as we go into June here, going into Thursday and then into the weekend, we have some aspects with Venus. All right, essentially Venus is gonna go over Uranus and trine up to Saturn. All right, because we've had Saturn trining up to Uranus uh, since late December. So it's gonna activate this. So. In the larger context of things first, if you can think back to late December of this year, um, at that time, if there's anything that you felt like you wanted more freedom with in your life or a bit more excitement in your life with, and you knew that was going to take some time, because again, that was involving Saturn as well, Saturn trying Uranus, and has recently shifted, maybe these past couple weeks, if you felt a bit more freer or that you know a little bit more of what to do and take action steps towards to, again, cultivate that freedom in your life or try new things, right? Progressive, innovative often with Uranus. But um, Venus activating it now, the second half of the week, it does suggest that, first of all, coming into June here on Thursday, we could be feeling very grounded, actually. Could be feeling very stable. And what's nice about this is that Venus is the ruler of this lunar cycle of Taurus. And so when it comes to those values that are really, you know, unfolding this week and this resourceful side of ourselves. And again, the side of ourself that's willing to take things slow and steadily to build things solidly in our life. This is a very stabilizing um, here midweek. So we could have been enjoying things very groundedly, whether it's the simple pleasures of life, whether it's cultivating the material life, the finances, material security, and even too with relationships. Okay, there could be a lot of stability in relationships. Um, here, this uh, middle part of the week, which is grounding everything. It's very long term. It's solidifying things. We're willing to be patient, see the big picture uh, with the things we value and also the people we value in life. All right. Then as we go into the weekend, we'll talk about this Mars here in just a minute. But looking at this now conjunction with Uranus going into Saturday, so it'll be like Friday, Saturday time. There's this whole new beginning about freedom with our values, freedom with relationships, in fact, could very well be new ones, you know, this conjunction. And it's all in Pisces. And what Venus in Pisces has been showing us for the past many months now, it's been at least three, maybe four months, I believe, with Venus in Pisces, um, really the bulk of what we've, what we've had so far this year. Um, Venus has been showing us how to really let go of everything that is outside of our control regarding what we value, and also regarding relationships. Our whole perspective of relationships has been requiring that surrender and letting go. So Uranus has been helping us do that for many years, like eight years in the sense of having more freedom through letting go and the freedom that comes from surrendering, right? Being present, accepting, having faith, trust. And, um, and this is all being activated. So when Venus goes over Uranus, second half of the week, we could very well feel like there's this whole new understanding about how to enjoy things in a way that it is more accepting, is more willing to, we're willing to let go or willing to be easygoing, right? Be present with everything we value and with our relationships. And that can be a very freeing thing. 
And so if there's anything relating to, you know, values or relationships in your life, this could be a new beginning with it, a new beginning specifically with the importance of freedom in them and um, having a bit of space and presence and acceptance, which generally with Uranus and Pisces can be very liberating in and of itself. All right, so a new chapter with this. This is a yearly new chapter with freedom, with our values and relationships. All right, so very nice there, the second half of the week with all that. Now, Mars is going to be squaring up to Chiron um, here going into the weekend as well, around Friday, even Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So with all this stuff involving Mars earlier in the week, which is, again, more about matters relating to our motivations and our drives, uh, there could be some wounds coming up later in the week about them. Okay, if you do feel any wounds come up about your confidence, about your ability to cultivate your values, you know, your sense of self-worth, things of this nature, know that this is a collective thing taking place that might be challenging depending on your personal chart internally, but know that it's all internal with Chiron, okay? This is that you're actually very good with whatever it is you might be concerned about or whatever you might feel a wound about, but Chiron is helping you accept those wounds, become more aware of these wounds, and then through the acceptance of them, you heal, you rejuvenate, you refresh. So if there's anything in the second half that you can not feel like, you can learn more about in terms of any wounds you might have about your confidence, your motivations, your drives, your ambitious side, your personal needs, right? You in many ways. Um, yeah, be aware of that. Accept that. Do the healing. And I think through this process, through, through us willing to do the healing, we get on the right side of the square and then it's us challenging ourselves to heal, which is the square, but then it's us challenging ourselves versus it feeling so challenging. So the more I think we're willing to dive deep, the more we're willing to accept any wounds that do come up about that Mars related stuff, motivation, confidence, whatever it is, I think we're going to find that uh, we're working on this. It can be very constructive. And as a result, going into the later part of the weekend, feeling healed, right? Feeling a bit rejuvenated with those masculine confidence action oriented aspects of ourselves okay so looking more at the weekend though because there's a lot going on this weekend uh, on saturday along with this whole new beginning with our values and relationships and this theme relating to letting go and having freedom uh you know in our life and really build our values in a way that's more of an expression of what we're truly about with saturn um We've got the sun trining up to Jupiter, but then the sun squares up to Neptune on Sunday. So on Saturday, there could be a bit of buoyancy. We could be very expressive, in fact, very open-minded. It's a very nice aspect, mind you. It's very good for expanding our horizons, thinking big, seeing potentials, maybe some opportunities. But I think a lot of it is probably in regards to what we're focused on, or we could just be feeling a boost of that self-expression. But um, then as we get into Sunday, then all of a sudden, this energy of low energy, it can often feel with Neptune and the sun, because the sun is the fire, it's the life force, and Neptune's the water, it's the ocean. And these are coming together in a challenging aspect, so it can sometimes feel like a, a bit of a lowered energy, or a bit of a fog, a bit of a haze, and possibly even uncertainty. So this is all going to depend on your personal chart, but this is the collective energies here. So the best way of working with this to challenge yourself again, because it is a square, is about uh, perhaps some spiritual activities. What can you do to relax? Maybe it's hard to relax on Sunday, uh, but what can you do to relax? Meditation, what can you do to accept where you're at in life? Be present, have faith, maybe prayer, okay? These kinds of things, spiritual activities, or just maybe, yeah, challenging yourself or taking some actions to take a step back, to access as best as you can the accepting nature of yourself, your faith, and anything else that, you know, will help you surrender everything outside of your control. And with that, just like the other squares, uh, I was talking about the other square I was talking about, Mars square, Chiron, is um, through this process, we can become more accepting. We can develop all this spiritual quality of willing to let go, willing to go with the flow. And that can be very constructive over the weekend, okay? So I think it's a mixed bag. I don't think it's all just challenging with that square to Neptune. Uh, certainly not with Venus still starting the cycle and even trining the North Node on a minor note. 
But uh, there's support this weekend, especially with the Sun trying Jupiter. So I think it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of a shift. So how can you think both big, seeing the big picture, open-minded, express yourself, Sun trying Jupiter, while at the same time, you know, do that spiritual work, have some acceptance, and through that, uh, yeah, find that flow of life. And listen to your intuition, perhaps, or anything you can do to develop your intuition over the weekend can also go well. All right, so that is the, um, actually, no, that is not the weekend in a nutshell, because this weekend, to top all of this off, we've got sign changes. We've got Mercury going into Taurus this weekend. We've got Mars shifting into Gemini going into next week. So what this means is, first of all, our thoughts and the way we're communicating things has been very direct lately. We've had Mercury in Aries these past couple weeks. And so uh, that's been very good for us, right? We've become a little bit clear about what we want in life. Um, this is still going on pretty much the whole week. Bit very direct with our communication, what we want, clear about what we want and things of this nature. Uh, but Mercury is going to shift into Taurus around Saturday, Sunday, especially next week, which is that now our minds become more grounded, okay, in Taurus, which is where the other planets are. And I think we'll be thinking more in terms of what we value in life. I think we already are because of the sun, this whole cycle is about Taurus, but our thinking goes here and our practical abilities go here. So anything that does involve your mind in terms of how to you know, figure things out, plan things, work on things that involve your values in life, we've got that positive energy there. And we'll likely find the way we're communicating and thinking about things is just more grounded and stabilized um, and willing to really work on you know, learning one thing fully before moving on to the next thing or communicating one thing fully before moving on to the next, which is that slow and steady approach to Taurus. Now, Mars, which will probably feel mostly next week, and I'll talk more about this during the next weekly forecast. Uh, Mars going into Gemini means there's a shift of those actions. So where we have been feeling very stable and willing to take slow and steady actions, uh, we'll likely find going into next week that uh, there's a shift of our intention, that we're more focused on getting down to the ideas of the matter or learning. And through taking action, you know, learning in the process. We're just much more inquisitive, much more willing to, you know, under, you know, want to understand things before we take action or understand, you know, try to learn about things as we're taking action. And it can really invoke a lot of that inquisitive Gemini energy, a lot of that curiosity. And it is very good for that, right? Curiosity, willing to learn and communicating things very directly as well. You know, Mercury, the ruler of Gemini was in Aries. Now we have Mars, the rule of Aries and Gemini. So I think we'll still very much have that direct communication, wanting to get down to the bottom of things that involve information and um, yeah, that sort of thing. All right, so that is the weekend in a nutshell. The way I would sum this up, because I know there's a lot, um, is simply there's kind of two halves here, okay? There's the first half of the week, which is very much uh, involving Venus, okay? Or excuse me, Mars, excuse me. Mars is the first half. Venus is the second half. So the first half coming into the week with Mars, there's this whole shift taking place about our motivations. And I think patience with those motivations. Yet as we go into the week, a bit of an opening about something liberating, about freedom of action, motivation, seeing things differently with where we can put our energy, which is very nice. Maybe even a shift of perspective and seeing things deeply with Mercury, Trine, Pluto. Then the second half of the week has the Venus aspects, this whole stability with our values and relationships, yet freedom with them a little bit later. Some sort of new beginning about uh, this whole new perspective about surrender, letting go, having faith, and the freeing energy that arises from that. And we could be perhaps feeling a bit of wounds come up the second half of the week, really good for healing. Um, specifically things to Mars related stuff such as our motivations or drive or confidence levels things like that but as a result that can feel us re leave us feeling rejuvenated going into the weekend and um, the Sun so our expressive side probably quite expressive around Saturday feeling a bit buoyant open-minded but yet maybe needing to let go in some way or get some rest something like that get into the spiritual watery side of things uh, which could be challenging, but very constructive with the square up to Neptune. All right, so now let's go ahead and break this down for the individual signs. We're going to look at this for 
all the 13 different signs. Uh, I do recommend watching this for your uh, sun sign, moon sign, and ascendant sign. If you do know your time of birth, um, if you don't know what those are, check out the birth chart calculator down below. You will need your um, time of birth for your ascendant, but you may be able to find your moon without that. Um, but yeah, check that out. I do recommend watching these for all three. If you are going to watch just one, I do recommend the Ascendant, but obviously all three will give you a much more holistic picture. So there's timestamps down in the comment section, which will take you directly um, to your science portion of this video. All right, Aries, welcome to your weekly forecast. So let's have a look here at the uh, at your ruler here, Mars first, okay? So Mars coming into this week, as I said, um, is being aspected, your ruler, uh, and he's been already in your second house. In fact, you have a lot of second house energy. Um, this is all about this new beginning since last week about your values, maybe finances for some of you. Um, investments, um, enjoying the simple pleasures of life, being grateful for what you have in life. But I think most fundamentally about this whole new beginning about uh, your sense of self-worth and your values, and maybe even some of you too, this greater sense of self-reliance. So this is certainly continuing this week. And if there is anything you can challenge yourself towards uh, those new beginnings from later last week, I think is fantastic um, all week long here. But looking at this Monday, Coming into the week, Mars, your ruler, opposing up to Saturn. Patience might very well be needed. Uh, this is maybe about balancing, too, the fact that you've been, over the past couple years, maybe taking things like healing more seriously and um, you know your own psychology and breaking of some patterns. And maybe your whole structures in life and your foundations in life are going through a transformation with Saturn going over that galactic center. So you've got all this watery, more internal stuff, which is about healing and all this, uh, opposing up to what is right now, a lot of drive and motivation towards the earthy aspects of things, the material or the resources, the earth stuff. So earth and water in opposition. So anything you can do to find this balance that yes, you can continue to cultivate this healing, this deeper perspective, while at the same time, cultivate these values of yours, 
I think that's a great way of working with it. And I think with just the opposition up to Saturn, it's being as patient as you can, seeing that there's a big picture here, you know, there's a whole cycle that started early 2016 uh, for you involving stability, involving the things you're building. And so great time to do a status check coming into the week. See what's manifested with that. Some things have, some things haven't, uh, but that's okay. Continue to cultivate what has and see what intentions you can set for the next year and a quarter um, regarding anything that uh, will take time and you can be patient towards. Now, with that being said, Tuesday, Wednesday, then your ruler sextiles Uranus. And so all of a sudden there's this opening or opportunity here to have a bit of freedom in your life. Mix some things up. You could just be feeling more like being yourself or trying something new and different. Um, so that's nice. And that lifts it up. And this is all about the surrender and faith and trust that um, you've been um, finding the freedom with that or the freedom of learning more about yourself spiritually or psychologically these past eight years with Uranus in the 12th. But uh, fundamentally, just an openness here to mix some things up, be who you are, and um, yeah, bring in a bit of freedom in your life. So that's your ruler. And then at the end of the week, I do want to say, you know, your ruler does go into Gemini. So even though there's certainly a lot of emphasis on your values and resources and all this, inner resources, outer resources, um, at the end of the week going into next, Mars going into Gemini, you could be, um, you know, really feeling more inquisitive next week and wanting to learn, share, communicate more of that synergistic thing going on. So let's look at this Venus, right? Because Venus, the second half of this week, um, is going to be conjoining Uranus and trining up to that Saturn. So I think there is something new that could be shaping up and has been already, I think, shaping up regarding you having more acceptance in your life, maybe more tranquility, more peace in your life. Um, maybe again, understanding more about yourself psychologically or spiritually, which I think you already have very much because we've had so much energy in Pisces, uh, this year pretty much. But, um, uh, now Venus here, Venus has been in Pisces for a long time. I think a lot of you regarding your relationships and even these values have been learning a lot more about acceptance and faith and just letting go of everything outside of your control with those things. And that's been a very positive force. A lot of you too, probably just feeling very dreamy, imaginative, creative, willing to go with the flow and enjoy that, uh, especially specifically in relationships. Now, with that being said, here around this Friday, Saturday with this conjunction, um, there is this whole new beginning now with freedom in your relationships and the freedom of letting go and, and, and acceptance, you know, whatever that means for you personally. Maybe it's a, about a relationship, maybe it's just about relationships in general and the importance of freedom in them. Um, so new beginning there. I think the more willing you are to mix things up, try new things, I think the more supportive it is, but I think you're already going to be doing that. And that trying up to Saturn can at the same time help you stabilize, help you ground uh, whatever this sort of new beginning is with freedom, with your values. Could be financial with all this new beginning stuff, but uh, with your values and possibly relationships as well. All right. So over the weekend, that sun in the second house does trying up to Jupiter squares up to Neptune. So um, all of this stuff that is unfolding with your values, I think it is really good to see the big picture with. There could be some opportunities there possibly um, over the weekend for some of you maybe involving your work because uh, that's where the opportunities have been with Jupiter in the sixth house or with your routine or something like that. Just a bit of buoyancy there. But then also at the same time, some uncertainty, maybe about your aspirations or maybe about things involving friends or groups some sort of uncertainty there. But as I said, you know, there's a constructive way of working with that, of um, letting go, surrender as best as you can. And that can certainly free you up there. But I think it's a little bit of both easy and then a little later, a little challenging, but um, one kind of counters the other there. All right. And then Mercury over the weekend as well goes into your second house. So where I think a lot of you have already been very communicative and expressive and, and, and maybe just getting more involved with your routine or busy sometimes with Mercury in the first uh, that still pretty much continues because when Mars goes into your third, it's pretty much like the same thing where you can be very motivated towards learning, communication, driven, um, you know, to learn and, and share ideas or synergize or exchange and that kind of thing. So I think there's, you know, sort of a continuation with that. But Mercury going into your second means your mind will now start to shift more towards to these values and things like planning, practical stuff, learning about what you value tangibly working with whatever these new beginnings are with your resources uh, really supports you going into next week. 
All right, and I also want to mention too, you know, second half, Mars is going to be squaring up to Chiron. So if you do feel any wounds that do come up, second half, I think it's an excellent part to, of the week to do some healing. Um, again, with uh, anything that is psychological, it's been a lot of, you know, 12th house energy for you. A lot of you are healing some wounds psychologically, some traumas. Um, so anything you can do to challenge yourself with going deep there to understand this is all subjective. It's internal. It's not a reflection of who you are, what you're actually about. It's just some wounds, maybe past life stuff or whatever earlier in this life that as you do the healing with, learn more about your, learn about more about and learn more about yourself psychologically and all this, you'll find it to be very constructive. But all in all, it looks like a very nice week. Continuation of these new values, new beginnings here. Still very motivated this week with all of that. Uh, maybe just needing a little bit of patience coming into the week, but it's also very freeing as well. Second half has some nice new beginnings with those values and with relationships in terms of freedom here, mixing things up, maybe some progressive, innovative new things, unexpected things sometimes with Uranus. And uh, yeah, and then things continuing to unfold with those inner and outer resources. All right, so Aries, I hope you have a fantastic week. Thank you for all of your support with this channel. Uh, for those of you who've liked, comments, and even shared these videos, it's very much appreciated. Um, if you'd like a personal reading looking at your specific chart for the next year, uh, be sure to get in touch for that. There's a link also down in the comment section for that. But I wish you all the very best week, and I will see you all next time. Take care. All right, Taurus, welcome to your segment of the weekly forecast. So happy birthday, first of all, for those of you watching for your sun signs who have your birthdays this week. Um, but all of you do have all of this emphasis on your first house. So the first house is all about the self. It's all about our goals. It's all about the things we want to cultivate in our, in our life that is important to us. And you have a lot of things unfolding this week with this. Um, you had a new moon here um, late last week. And so it's an excellent week this week to challenge yourself with maybe taking steps towards some of these, uh, these goals of yours, your yearly goals, your yearly perspectives on things. You know, it's a whole new, it's like, it's like a new year for you um, in many ways with that new moon from last week. So uh, taking action steps, challenging yourself this week is excellent, but I think you'll find that there's a lot of um, energy and motivation to do so. Speaking of which, coming into the week, that energy and motivation, Mars, um, is opposing up to Saturn and sextiling Uranus. So I think coming into the week, there is needing some probably patience with maybe some of this stuff, maybe just the first couple of days or whatever, um, suggesting that there's this much larger picture uh, unfolding with things. It is still great to do the status check as well in terms of anything that you have started since um, early 2016. And maybe a lot of this has to do with relationships actually. Because we got Saturn in your seventh house of relationships, but Mars is also your seventh house ruler, suggesting that, first of all, in early 2016, did you start anything new with um, relationships or the sphere of relationships that you knew was going to take some time or hard work and you had to be patient with? Well, you're at the halfway point with it now, and you'll likely notice a lot of things have developed since then. And, you know, you're at this high point and, and there's even clarity with a lot of those stuff. But some things haven't, and so it's about shifting, letting go of what hasn't, if, if it, you're feeling it that way. But more importantly, I think just continuing to see the big picture and that, yes, this stuff takes time, but now you're on the second half of this, and everything you've learned the first half since early 2016, you can now develop and cultivate um, involving all of this stuff with relationships. Because face you, you know, mind you, there's the Saturn in your seventh house that really has been restricting this area for you, but for good reason. You know, it's so you can have long lasting, stable, grounded relationships, you know, um, having that discipline, that long term perspective. Uh, so the more willing you are to do that, again, have that patient approach to all areas yourself. But I would say certainly involving relationships here. I think you'll find this to be very constructive um, energy to work with. Now, with that being said, the Mars sex dialing Uranus means that I think you've been very aspiring lately. You got Venus in the 11th house. Uranus has been in your 11th house, and this is all about 
freedom with your aspirations, mixing things up, trying new things about your hopes and wishes for the future. And so there's a bit of there's a bit of this flow coming into the week. It could be motivating something new and different. Maybe it's about your aspirations. Maybe it's about group things for some of you, or your friends, um, others, maybe about technology or innovative things. And uh, yeah, there's just an opportunity, a bit of opening, a bit of motivation there coming into the week about that. Now, speaking on that Venus, because Thursday through Saturday, Venus was going to be part of this conjunction with Uranus, trining up to that Saturn in the seventh house of relationships. So I think there's certainly this new beginning with you because Venus is your ruler. I think you're going to be feeling that there already is this new beginning. But Friday, Saturday, more importantly, I mean, more specifically this week, um, there is this whole new perspective on freedom and what it means to really cultivate your aspirations in a way that is a reflection of what you're truly about and be progressive be innovative thinking outside the box it could be some new ideas you could be very intuitive um you know that kind of a thing and some of you too again maybe connecting with groups or community or your network circle something like that which could be very exciting as well so it's new it's an it happens once a year but it's a new cycle here about freedom of you freedom of you being who you are and cultivating your aspirations and maybe a bit of that sense of community there. And there's a lot of stabilizing energy here. It's very stabilizing with your relationships when it comes to this. In fact, probably around Thursday, you're just feeling very grounded, very stable uh, with those relationship things or just in general, actually. Your routine could be very stable. In fact, some of you might be doing some new things with your routine or your work, um, bringing a bit of freedom there the second half of this week. All right, so um, this weekend, the sun from the first is going to be trending up to Jupiter square Neptune. So there is some maybe opportunities continuing to unfold with yourself right now with this whole new beginning. This weekend, you could be feeling inspired or open minded about it. And I think a lot of it's about your self expression, maybe having a bit of fun and uh, hobbies, interests, creative energy. That's where the opportunities have been with Jupiter in your fifth. Um, so it could be a great weekend for that. Anything close to your heart fun, expressive, that kind of a thing, uh, or just creative. And uh, at the same time, though, maybe there's some uncertainty about the career stuff or about the productive aspects of your life around Sunday. So having a bit of faith there, surrender there, I think uh, can help construct that area and keep it nice and balanced, nice and grounded um, and stabilized. Now, these sign changes, you got Mercury going into your sign this weekend. This could be that you're going to start to probably come out of a bit of a haze generally because Mercury's been in your 12th house of the unconscious mind, of dreams, of intuition. I think a lot of you have been probably more intuitive lately or maybe getting some rest and just having a more receptive approach of the way you're thinking about things. But that's all starting to shift this weekend. You'll likely find that you're all of a sudden getting a bit clearer about who you are, what you want. And I, th I think that's already been the case, but your mind's going to shift here and you're just, your mind's more clear about this. And you could start to use that practical mind that you have very strongly, whether it's through plans or even communicating things, all right? Uh, anything that's about learning, synergy, reading, writing can be certainly emphasized for these next uh, at least few weeks here with Mercury and Taurus. All right, and then Mars does go into your second house. You'll likely find a shift, but mostly next week, about motivation towards your values, about resources, finances, things of that nature. A lot of drive there uh, can certainly be unlocked, and I'll talk more about that next week. All right, so Taurus, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, comment, and share it down below uh, to share the word about sidereal astrology and, yeah, this different form of astrology. But uh, wishing you all the very best week. If you'd like a personal reading looking at the year ahead with your specific chart, uh, be sure to get in touch for that. There's also a link down in the comment section, but I'm sending you all my best and I will see you all next time.
All right, Geminis, welcome to your segment of the weekly forecast. So looking first at, uh, let's look at your ruler Mercury, um, who is uh, going to still be in your 11th house for the bulk of the week up until the weekend. Probably very, you got, all of you are probably very aspiring right now, uh, thinking about future things, hopes and wishes more than likely. Um, but also, too, maybe wanting to connect with your friends or your network circles, things like that. So that could certainly continue to be emphasized. In fact, around Tuesday and Wednesday, that Mercury trines up to Pluto, suggesting that you could be feeling very deep in, in a positive way, just more maybe open, vulnerable uh, with those groups. Or maybe you're starting to gain some new ideas about your aspirations and you just have this power about you, which is very positive. And I think a lot of it is about relationships, actually. Um, or it's, it's, it's expressing itself through relationships because a lot of you over the past many years have transformed a lot about uh, relationships, let go of some past patterns, some fears, things like that. But all this is in a very supportive aspect this week in which you, um, you just feel empowered. And I think it's excellent for those uh, future things as well as anything group related. All right, so looking at this in terms of what this whole cycle is about though, because last week we had a new moon in your 12th house. I think it's a very watery time. I think... It's great for you all to maybe get some rest right now if you're guided to or um, learn more about yourself psychologically, spiritually, maybe things like meditation, uh, which is where you can have a bit more peace fundamentally, which is what the 12th house is all about. Um, so whatever helps you get there, I suppose. But new beginning with that and anything you can do to challenge yourself towards having more peace in your life and more acceptance and more tranquility, um, I think it's great to do this week. And... Um, yeah, I think you'll find all that very natural, in fact, and you can be very motivated towards that, and that could really help you cultivate um, these things. So speaking of which, uh, that Mars is going to be opposing up to Saturn coming into the week. So uh, being sort of grounding the fact that, yes, it's a spiritual time. Yes, it's a great time for maybe some rest or, and whatnot. But it's also been a time where I think a lot of you have been working really hard with your routine or your work. You know, anything you do on a daily level. And so still doing that and just being grounded, I think, coming into the week in the sense of, yes, having the, the, the tranquil energy, but also having the grounded productive energy, the work, the routine, all of that, and finding the balance with that, maybe bringing in some of that receptive energy into your everyday experiences and maybe bringing in some of that routine into your spirituality, such as through, you know, anything like meditation or um, yoga, spiritual activities that involve routine in order to become more, you know, uh, spiritually attuned to your being, let's say, and, and to invoke that peace and tranquility in your life. So good to have that balance coming into the week in general. But that Mars does sextile up to Uranus. So there's also this bit of inspiration probably about your career, your productive life, which can be very freeing, in fact. And uh, this actually gets emphasized a little later in the week, Thursday through Saturday, the second half, when Venus goes over Uranus and trines up to that Saturn. So I think there's a whole new beginning this later part of the week about freedom with your career or freedom with your productive life, even feeling quite free with your, um, with your uh, self-expression, in fact, and maybe having a bit of fun, doing some new and different things for fun, that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, it's very freeing. And I think all in all, just seeing where you can continue to have more freedom in your career and uh, sort of if there is anything shifting here that you feel like you can make some changes to promote that this later part of the week, I think could be very, uh, not only freeing, but very stabilizing with the trine up to Saturn, very grounded. Um, in fact, I think you are very productive and, and can really utilize that energy uh, all week long, but maybe particularly the second half with Saturn in the 6th, trining up to Venus in the 10th. That routine that you've been developing, you know, that day-to-day -day hard work there, really supporting whatever these changes are with um, your productive life or your career. All right, and then also over the weekend, um, the Sun is going to be trining up to Jupiter, squaring up to Neptune. So with all this more spiritual stuff, you know, this is very much invoking the fact that right now the opportunities have really been to maybe connect with your home, uh, family, your health, perhaps this past like nine months now with Jupiter and Virgo. And so there could be some opportunities with that, maybe enjoying a bit of that more personal life stuff. And at the same time, there might be some uncertainty about uh, your, your possibilities, future things in the sense of um, your belief systems, maybe matters relating to learning or travel, your adventurous side, that kind of thing is just a bit of a 
of uncertainty about. And so I think just working with it, again, con spiritually, constructively, having a bit of acceptance, a bit of faith can really help this. Let go of everything outside your control. And then you'll find this to be actually very constructive in that you're continuing to develop this greater trust, this greater acceptance, which is really what this whole cycle is about in your 12th house. Now, your ruler does go into the 12th this weekend, Saturday, Sunday time. This will be the emphasis for about the next three weeks, um, as it already has been with this whole new beginning here. But Mercury going in here, I think it'll be an excellent time to learn more about Yes, particularly learn more about yourself spiritually. A lot of you could be learning about psychology at this time. A lot of you getting a lot of information through your dreams. Um, and a lot of you too, just maybe with your routine again, taking a bit more of a break or a bit more of a receptive approach. So anything you can do that's constructive on that level, I think is fantastic. I think that's the major theme right now because um, just around the corner and, and, and even pretty soon because you're gonna have Mars coming into your first house, you know, going into next week, a lot of you are going to be more driven towards your goals, more ambitious, uh, feeling a bit of that confidence boost, and, and you're just taking action, learning through taking action, which is what you do anyways. Uh, but that's Mars going into your first, and then about a week and a half, Sun's going to go into your first, and then about three weeks, Mercury's going to go into your first. So before we get into all this first house energy, which is all about ourself and our goals and all this, we do have to get in touch with our beingness you know, ourself spiritually. And I think that's what this time period is about. And if there's anything you can clear at this time, let go of, get, you know, get in touch with, um, learn more about spiritually, psychologically, I think is absolutely fantastic. All right. So Gemini's, I hope you all have a fantastic week. Thank you for all of your likes, comments, and shares with these videos. It's tremendously, um, very, very supportive. And I very much appreciate that. But I uh, wish you all the very best. If you'd like a personal reading, there is a link down in the comment section for that, uh, looking at your chart specifically for the next year. Um, so have a great one, and I will see you all next time. All right, Cancers, welcome to your weekly forecast. So looking at first this new moon, which took place at the tail end of last week, uh, that new beginning was in your 11th house of your aspirations. And so if there was anything from later last week that you started involving your future hopes and wishes, involving the things you want to uh, really cultivate, that you aspire towards into the future, um, it's an excellent week to challenge yourself with this in this first quarter phase, right? Uh, the moon and sun will be in square. That's your ruler. So it is about taking action, taking steps towards whatever those new beginnings are. For some of you, these new beginnings could be involving your community, um, friends, network circles, uh, things of that nature as well. So Monday through Wednesday coming into the week, Mars is going to be opposing up to Saturn and sex dialing up to Uranus. So first of all, with this opposition up to Saturn, I think you've already been very driven towards these aspirations or network circles um, this past uh, really couple months uh, with Mars here. Um, but now opposing up to Saturn, specifically around Monday, maybe there's some patience needed with some of this. Um, you know, Saturn has really been sort of limiting, you could say, your self-expression, the side of yourself that wants to have fun and express yourself. And that's been for like the past two years. So it's all about balance here in the sense that, yes, it's great to continue to put energy into these aspirations. Absolutely. That's what this whole cycle is about. But with Saturn, it's kind of a reminder that, yes, but with patience and with balance and continuing to take steadily this whole new stuff, this whole new self-expression that is more serious or just more grounded, 
more responsible, you know, in the things that are close to your heart or the things you're creating in life or have created, uh, just, just still needing this bit of hard work or just more like patience with it. And that's really what your aspirations need is for you to have a, perhaps more of a grounded um, perspective on that self-expression and vice versa. You know, that self-expression, it's not just about the grounded energy there either. Uh, your fun, your playful, your expressive side, your passionate side needs those aspirations as well. So a little bit of balance with, the, with, with those two. And I think patience is the name of the game. But with that being said, Mars sextiling Uranus lifts this up, particularly Tuesday through Wednesday, uh, suggesting that you could be feeling quite, yes, st very, as I was saying, motivated towards those aspirations, maybe some opportunities with those things, but probably quite open-minded. In fact, when Venus goes over Uranus later in the week, the second half, uh, there is this whole new beginning, I think, about freedom in your life, freedom of expanding your horizons. Maybe some of you uh, doing some higher learning, university, something new there. Others maybe travel, adventure. Others maybe spirituality, philosophy, gurus, you know, spiritual teachings, things like that. But whatever it is that expands your horizons, there's this whole new shift taking place the second half, particularly through Friday and Saturday, that you can find um, very liberating, very freeing, and a whole new chapter about that stuff. Maybe even some of you, too, a whole new beginning with your, um, your home life, your family, or your health, something like that as well. All right, and it's very stabilizing, too, because that Venus does trine up to Saturn, so there's a good grounded energy about it also about the home life about those aspirations in fact there could be a whole new take about your aspirations at that time or network circles it's very freeing though whatever it is but yet stabilizing all right and then over the weekend saturday through sunday the sun does trine up to jupiter squares up to neptune so with these new beginnings with this future stuff these things larger than yourself if you will um there's a bit of hope here a bit of inspiration and maybe you're feeling quite communicative. Maybe you're feeling like learning this weekend because that's really where the opportunities have been this past roughly nine months with Jupiter in your third, um, helping you learn, read, write, get into the practical aspects of things. So it could be a good weekend for that. Uh, and then the square up to Neptune does suggest that maybe there's some uncertainty about some things. Maybe it's deep on a deeper level. Maybe it's about beginnings and uh, endings, life and death, transformation, healing, that sort of thing. But uh, I think the more willing you are to, <clears throat> like I was saying in the general, surrender, let go of everything outside of your control, um, you'll find this to be very constructive and could be a very good weekend for bringing in more of that acceptance, maybe about those aspirations, maybe about the deeper elements of life. So Mercury is going to go into that 11th house this weekend. And so your mind's going to now shift towards these aspirations. Some of you too, maybe how you can get more value out of your career. Because Mercury's been in your 10th house of career, and I think you'll still be thinking about that this week, or your productive life, maybe working on it, what have you. But the end of the week, weekend, going into next, and really for the next few weeks, really learning more about what you truly value in your career, and um, extracting those values, whether it's the finances or the enjoyments of your career, whatever it might be. And again, that's what this whole cycle is about. So Mercury just comes in here and, and gives you more of his practical ability to see the future, and again, for some of you, connecting with your network circles, networking, friends, things like that. And uh, there's lots, of, lots to learn about that. And there could be some good communication and ideas about that stuff. Now, Mars does go into your 12th house. This will be mostly the emphasis next week and for about the next month about um, you know getting things done probably in a bit more of a receptive way. It'll be good to maybe get some alone time if you're guided to, a bit of space with the routine, maybe with the career. Um, even though things are still unfolding with it. And uh, yeah, just getting things done in a way that you're exerting the least amount of energy possible um, is really good with Mars in the 12th. Mars in the 12th is kind of like the spiritual warrior where it's, you know, we're taking action, but we're doing it present, you know, presently with meditation, perhaps, for example, like a samurai, that kind of a thing. You know, it's very present action, finding the flow of life, the current of life and following it. All right, so Cancers, I hope you have a fantastic week. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, comment, and share down below. If you'd like a personal reading, there's a link down in the comment section for that, looking at the year ahead for you specifically. So wishing you all the very best. Thank you again, and I will see you all next time. Take care.
Leos, welcome to your weekly forecast. So let's have a look first at this whole cycle, this whole uh, lunar cycle that just started late last week in your 10th house of career. I think a lot of you are starting some new things about this, your productive life, you know, anything that, that you do consider to be your your work or your life's work sort of thing. But um, yeah, great week to challenge yourself with this. We're in the first quarter phase, great for taking action steps towards uh, whatever those new beginnings are. Not to mention your energy levels are probably quite strong at the moment, specifically if you're watching this for your ascendant or your sun sign. And uh, you know, you've got this overarching perspective too, uh, with the sun up at the top, Mars up at the top, and just really good energy there for anything productive and long term. With that being said, coming into the week that Mars will be opposing up to Saturn. So it is still about balance with, you know, your productive life and your personal life or your family life or your home life. You know, Saturn over the past um, roughly two years has been helping you get more stability here with your home, with your health, perhaps. And so, you know, we can't have one without the other. Of course, uh, we do need to have good, solid structures with the home life and, and our health in order to have good career productive life. So anything you can do to balance this and just be patient with this, I think. I think there's just needing some patience. And, and it's great to do the status check too, because a lot of you may have started something new involving your, your home or your health since the early 2016 time period. And um, now it's like the status check. You're at like this halfway point now of seeing, okay, yes, Things have cultivated, but there's still perhaps more to cultivate over the next year and a half that you can cultivate involving both your career and your home life, personal life. But uh, we'll take time, but that's okay. I think the more willing you are to take the slow and steady approach, I think you'll find this to be very constructive through this next year and a quarter. Now that Tuesday, Wednesday, right after that, Mars sextiles Uranus. So there's maybe some freedom here being invoked about the career productive life. Maybe it's freedom of really getting to the... Uh, uh, really deep dimensions of life. Uranus has been in your eighth house, helping you maybe express yourself in deep ways or just really see the deep truth of life and um, transforming and healing and maybe breaking some past patterns has been very freeing. In fact, I think a lot of you have already been doing a lot of this um, with all that Pisces energy we had. But anyways, Venus is going to go over Uranus the second half of the week, Friday through Saturday. <clears throat> And so there could be another shift in the right direction with this. Maybe it's the depth with your career. Maybe it's, you know, really connecting to what matters most in your career, maybe with relationships, but I think fundamentally with life generally. And what you'll find is, is that there's this whole new, probably freedom with your career, something new and different, maybe exciting or innovative, progressive, maybe some new ideas with it. Um, but also too, just in general of enjoying this whole new connection about, um, you know, connecting to what matters most to you in life. And uh, as I said, that can be very liberating, very freeing, and it's starting a whole new chapter with all of that. So anything you can do that also gets vulnerable as well, but I think it's gonna come very naturally and very easy, especially because Saturn's trining up to it. It's all part of this grand trine with the North Node in your first house. You know, all this life path about you be being independent this year and from last year as well. So continue to cultivate that's very supportive but yeah you're stabilizing all of this your career could be stabilizing the second half yet freeing at the same time you know your your openness and vulnerability is stabilizing yet freeing at the same time very liberating there all right this could also have to do with shared resources <clears throat> for those of you involved with like shared resources um, or debts loans um, things of that nature other people's money basically uh, something new and different here, inheritance, you know, whatever that might be, if that has been an emphasis for you, same applies for that. All right, now this weekend, your ruler trines up to Jupiter. This weekend, you could be feeling quite hopeful, open-minded, maybe quite expressive, in fact. There could be some opportunities with finances or investments, maybe pertaining to the career stuff, which is very supportive for you. But at the same time, there's also a bit of fog or uncertainty. Maybe it's about the relationship side of things or just low energy or whatever it is. So because it's your ruler, I think it's mostly, you know, this is very applicable to you this weekend of maybe challenging yourself towards what you can do to let go, have some faith and some acceptance in your life. And I think that can really help, you know, sort of balance out if there is any confusion or doubt. Because when there's confusion, it's usually because we're trying to figure something out. We're resisting the present moment. We're resisting how things actually are. And so anything that does help you accept, 
presence, you know, accept things for how they are, you'll find that to be very constructive. All right. So, um, yeah, let's see here. Now, this weekend, uh, to top all this off, uh, Mercury goes into your 10th house. So your mind's going to go into the career, the productive stuff. You can really be working on it the next few weeks, like literally working on it, working on the details of it. Some of you may be learning more about your career, working on things there, but, you know, really even um, just getting the practical aspects of it. And then Mars does go into your 11th house of your aspirations. So a lot of you will probably feel a bit of a boost, mostly next week, but maybe Sunday shifting, uh, a bit of a boost towards your aspirations, future things, hopes and wishes, maybe motivated to connect to, to your, your friends and your network circles as well with Mars. All right, so Leos, have a fantastic week. Thank you for all of your likes, comments, and shares with these videos. If you'd like a personal reading, there is a link down in the comment section uh, looking at the year ahead for your specific chart. Uh, so I wish you all the very best, and I will see you all next time. Take care. Virgos, welcome to your weekly forecast. So let's look at your ruler Mercury, who's in your eighth house this week, as he has been the past week, roughly, depending or two weeks, depending on when you're watching this. But uh, I think it has been a deep time, right? But also a very liberating time and freeing time. Um, this whole cycle, uh, this whole new moon from last week started in your ninth house of adventure, of open-mindedness, philosophy, maybe spirituality, higher learning. Uh, so that's certainly continuing to unfold and there's this like, you know, larger perspective on life that you have right now, which yes, can be very freeing. Uh, with that being said, your ruler Mercury still is in your eighth house for the um, bulk of the week up until around Saturday, <clears throat> suggesting that it is an excellent time for still getting deep with life, learning more about yourself psychologically, breaking some patterns, being more aware of some patterns in your life that are repeating, that aren't facilitating your growth and your development and your evolution. Um, so breaking some patterns, facing some fears, right? Getting deep and vulnerable with life, with yourself, in the deeper dimensions. And in that way, you're finding this, yes, a very liberating time. In fact, by that weekend time, Friday, Saturday, Mercury goes into your ninth house. And then that's where, I think there's already been transformations, but I think that's where the transformation sort of finalizes. Once your ruler goes into the ninth. And then this weekend, Maybe you're feeling more expansive, continuing with that philosophy, seeing the big picture, adventurous, whatever that is. And it's really a transformation from whatever this deeper work is that you've been doing and can continue to do this week. All right. So uh, with that being said, uh, Mars, who is in the ninth house, I think a lot of you are very motivated again towards expanding of your horizons, whether they're mental or quite literal. Uh, but being patient with that, maybe coming into the week around Monday, uh, Mars opposing Saturn. Saturn's been in your third house these past two years, helping you get really, pract like really practical with things. Uh, maybe some of you have been working hard towards learning, reading, writing, communication, uh, practical stuff that you're, you know, you're either receiving or giving. Uh, so whatever that's been, it's just saying that, yes, there are. this is an expansive time for you, most certainly, but at the same time, maybe there's some of these responsibilities here. So it's about patience. It's about balance, seeing the big picture, Understanding that things do take time. And I think the more willing you are to take the slow and steady steps towards these things that you likely know take time uh, is really getting on the right side of this uh, transit. And again, seeing the possibility, uh, possibilities as well as the practical, right? Because they're really one and the same thing. Only what's possible is actually practical and real and grounded. And what is practical and real, obviously, is you know there's opportunities there there's there's a larger picture there's more to expand with and so it's a little bit of both there for you now that mars does sextile up to uranus which suggests that there could be something new and different maybe it is about this communication learning stuff maybe it's about relationships uranus we'll talk more about that it's been in your seventh house 
and maybe it is about this more expansive view. So it's not a major aspect, but as we come out of Monday into Tuesday, Wednesday, there's just a bit more of this freedom. And this is more freedom of you maybe mixing things up, trying something new and different, expanding your horizons, maybe connecting with those relationships. Um, but whatever it is, it certainly is giving you a bit more of change in your life, a bit more excitement perhaps. And it's nice to kind of listen to that if you are guided to. Now that Mercury, your ruler, is going to be trending up to Pluto this middle part of the week. So yeah, I think I think you're willing to go deep. I think you're willing to transform. I think you are transforming. I think it's all happening. And even though Mercury is not going to shift till the end of the week, I think this is all just steps in the right direction more and more. It's because there's always layers, right? There's always layers of transformation. So you're feeling deep. You're probably communicating yourself very deeply, just very down to the fact of things. Very good for research, deep diving, learning you know, generally about things that are beneath the surface, whether it's about you or other things and your career, you could be feeling like there's maybe some positive changes with that. Or you're just more real and raw. It's just maybe, yeah, maybe you're just more connected to the deeper dimensions of your career as well or transforming it in some way, which is very supportive. All right. So let's look at this Venus uh, Thursday through Saturday. Venus is going to go over Uranus, particularly Friday through Saturday and trying up to Saturn. So there's this whole new beginning, uh, which already has been the case on, you know, in steps since the beginning of this year involving your relationships. And I think a lot of it has been about freedom in relationships, um, bringing in a bit of excitement, some new things, some changes there, but, uh, Venus going over Uranus will certainly activate this. And so this is a whole new shift of your values involving your one-to-one -one connections, maybe something new and different specifically involving finances or your values actually but um, all through the area of your one-to-one -one connection. So uh, very stabilizing with Saturn. I think the communication could go well with those one-to-one -one connections, um, with the financial stuff or the, the investments, material aspects of life. You're feeling very grounded, very structured there, uh, yet freeing at the same time. And anything you can do to mix those things up, I think is fantastic. All right, and then Saturday and Sunday, the sun does trine up to Jupiter and squares up to Neptune. So with all this more expansive stuff, right around the same time that you are, again, transforming with Mercury coming into the ninth, there is this, um, there is this, this optimism, I think, and maybe even opportunity because Jupiter's been in your first house, been there for the past nine months, roughly. And so there certainly is opportunities to expand your horizons, think big, um, cultivate some of these... Um, these goals of yours and things you want in life. So there's certainly inspiration there. I would say certainly utilize it, but at the same time, maybe there's some uncertainty. Maybe the uncertainty is more about your work or your routine or the day-to-day -day stuff. So anything you can do, as I was saying in the collective reading, to um, surrender, let go of anything that is outside of your control there, involving in this case, the day-to-day, -day, I think you'll find this to be um, you know very constructive. So um, also at the weekend, which you'll feel mostly next week, is Mars going into your 10th house of career, of your productive life. So right around the corner is this sort of uh, now shift into your 10th house. This is everything that's productive, big picture, long term. And maybe over the weekend, you could be motivated and driven to do that. You may even notice your energy level starting to pick up as well. As Mercury comes out of the 8th and Mars goes into the 10th house, which is where he's strongest, you know, up at the top of the chart. All right, so Virgos, have a fantastic week. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, comment, and share it down below. If you'd like a personal reading, there's a link down in the comment section for that, looking at your specific chart uh, for the year. So be sure to get in touch for that if you haven't yet gotten a reading. But I uh, wish you all the very best, and I will see you all next time. Take care.
Libras, welcome to your weekly forecast. So let's have a look here at uh, this new moon from last week. Uh, this whole new beginning in your eighth house. So the eighth house is about everything deeper in life. And I think a lot of you have been very motivated here lately with Mars, but now this new beginning is uh, you know, helping you cultivate this uh, perhaps deeper perspective on life. Uh, maybe some new beginnings about uh, releasing of some past patterns, breaking of some patterns, um, accepting some fears, and uh, really get in touch with the whole part of life that is about beginnings and endings and transformation and alchemy in all of this. So if there is anything that uh, has started here where you do feel like you do just simply want to get deeper with, get more vulnerable with, Maybe it's with yourself, maybe it's with life in general, maybe it's with your career or you're researching things, or maybe it's with relationships. Um, I think it has been involving relationships the past couple months, but this new beginning now about really getting into the heart of the matter of what matters most in life and to the core of things, <clears throat> excuse me, the, to the core of things, even though it does take going through the layers right of the transformation of the healing of the acceptance of breaking of those patterns of accepting those fears being more aware of them right so that's all of this in a spiritual perspective but you know the eighth house is also about shared resources if that area has been activated for you it is a great week to challenge yourself towards continuing to cultivate anything that is a sort of shared resources or loans debts um, inheritances things of that nature all right, so um, <clears throat> with that being said, Mars is opposing up to Saturn from the eighth house and your second. So I think that over the past couple of years, a lot of you have been taking the slow and steady approach to your self-reliance, you know, in your finances, in your material life. So with all this now energy in the deeper side of life, the non-physical values of life, um, it is about balance. And I think just being very patient with some of this stuff, maybe it's financial or maybe it's more about, you know, these things you do want to cultivate that, that are really close to your core. Uh, just being patient with it because this is saying there's a much larger picture involved here and Saturn, you know, we're at the halfway point with Saturn. So um, you can do the status check and see, okay, what's working in this area, what's not, and what can you be patient with and continue to develop and I think from that perspective, it can be very supportive. Now, this Mars is sextiling up to Uranus in your sixth house. In fact, your sixth house is very activated. This is the house of your work, your routine, anything you do on a daily level. So um, and even your health too, and it's about your regimens and your diet and things like that. So, um, so anyways, you got a little bit of support here coming into it with Mars sextile Uranus. You could be feeling a bit free here in this area. Maybe there is a... a Financial opportunity is possible uh, for some of you. Maybe it's a bit of flow with your relationships, a bit of excitement, something new and different there around Tuesday, Wednesday. But this really gets activated later in the week once uh, Venus uh, trines Saturn and goes over that Uranus here Thursday through Saturday. So this being your ruler, I think the second half, you're feeling very stable, very grounded, very structured, which is excellent. Uh, this is supporting your routine, your work, whatever this daily stuff is you're involved with. And it could be supporting the financial material life, even though that's taking time and you're probably being patient or working hard towards that still. But when Venus goes over Uranus around Friday and Saturday, you're all of a sudden starting this whole new cycle about freedom with you and freedom of being who you are. And again, it's through this transformation that you're doing because Venus rules this eighth house of yours. So this whole new shedding of the old skin, this whole new perspective on things, which can be very liberating. And I think it's all in the area of you making continuous changes with your work and your day-to-day -day stuff. So you have more freedom in your everyday life. So you have more, more freedom with your work, things like this. And this is certainly a new step in the right direction. And again, maybe something new involving that. But fundamentally, this is you, your ruler, new, new you, or new you that is more of your true self. All right, now over the weekend, the sun does trine up to Jupiter and squares up to Neptune. So um, there is a bit of inspiration. Maybe you're getting some rest, relaxation. Maybe it's quite easy going. Um, it's helping all this watery stuff. Jupiter in the 12th house. The opportunities really have been spiritual for you of uh, getting your alone time or seeing synchronicity in your life. You know, these past like nine months. So all of that is very supportive. And... Um, 
At the same time, though, the sun does square up to Neptune, so there might be some uncertainty or doubt or low energy, as I was saying in the collective reading. And this may have to do with your passions in life or all in all your self-expression, you know, things that are close to your heart, anything that's close to your heart. Okay, so letting go, surrendering everything outside of your control, I think can really help you work with this constructively there. All right, now Mercury is going to go into your eighth house. So where I think you'll still be probably thinking in terms of relationships most of this week, and maybe communications emphasized in those relationships, that starts to shift over the weekend where all of a sudden your mind goes now into the deeper dimensions. And you could be literally learning a lot about hidden things, uh, occult things, uh, spiritual things, psychological things, you know, all this deeper stuff and research even. And so your mind really now facilitates all of this deeper perspective that is transforming for you in this part of the year. Now, Mars is going into your ninth, though. Also this weekend, this will be mostly the emphasis of next week and um, the next month, roughly, with motivation drive towards expanding your horizons. There is a transformation actually occurring when Mars leaves the eighth and goes into the ninth in the sense that you start to feel uh, like it's literally taking action towards expanding your horizons. Some of you may do that through philosophy, ideas, higher learning. Others may be literally going for walks or hikes or nature or adventure or travel, things like that. And so uh, that's where your motivation is. And I think you can find a lot of that very, um, yeah, very motivating, but mostly next week and onward. All right. So Libras, the way I would sum up this week, though, is new beginnings with the deeper dimensions. Transformation change. It's an excellent time for that right before what will be a very freeing time for you as all these planets make their way into your ninth house. But we do have to transform, accept, really connect to what matters most in life. Um, get a lot of support for that. And uh, the big area, though, I think for you is with the routine, the work, the day-to-day -day stuff, the health, the diet, things of that nature, um, particularly around Friday and Saturday when um, there's this continuous, as there already has been, but now this n next shift in terms of freedom here, freedom of you being who you are, and perhaps making some changes, maybe not major, but just seeing like there's some some changes taking place here um, involving your work, which can be very liberating or your day to day activities. All right. So Libras, um, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you did find it helpful, be sure to like, comment and share this video with your friends and family. Uh, if you'd like a personal reading, there is a link down in the comment section uh, looking at the year ahead for your specific chart. Um, so do get in touch for that. Um, and I wish you all the very best, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. All right, Scorpio and Fucus, welcome to your weekly forecast. So the whole new moon from last week was in your seventh house of relationships. In fact, with your ruler Mars already in this area the past couple months, roughly, I think you've already been motivated towards this or more direct, you know, it's just more emphasizing you and your relationships at this time. Now, uh, with the new beginnings, it's an excellent week to challenge yourself in this first quarter phase of how can you take the, uh, the steps and the implementation of whatever these new beginnings were um, from last week. Now, Mars, your ruler, is opposing up to Saturn coming into the week on Monday. So this is about patience, um, just in general for you. You know, Saturn in your first house the past couple of years is that a lot of you have been developing more of a patience with yourself and your goals and the things you want in life, probably just becoming a bit more uh, mature, grounded, you could say, as is the 29-year cycle with Saturn here. But um, yeah, seeing the big picture, being patient, understanding things do take time. Maybe it's involving your goals. Maybe it's involving your relationships. Could even be involving your work or your day-to-day -day activities. Uh, so being patient, getting on that side of Saturn can help balance out this energy. But it's also about you know the fact that there's these personal needs and things that you are grounding and you are developing. 
and balancing those with your relationships because your relationships need you to be cultivating your personal needs. And um, you need, obviously, relationships in your life to grow and develop um, in whatever that uh, way is that you are striving towards. So, um, and just in general. So, anyways, with that opposition, Mars then sextiles up to Uranus a little bit later, Tuesday through Wednesday. Probably presenting a bit of an opening here for you to express yourself. In fact, your self-expression can be very liberating uh, this week, as it may have already have has been with uh, all this emphasis in Uranus, in, in Pisces, with Uranus. But uh, Mars, your ruler, sextile Uranus, you could be feeling quite free Tuesday, Wednesday, like being yourself. Maybe it is involving freedom in your relationships, and uh, maybe it is also involving freedom with your work and routine. So I think the more open you are to mixing things up, trying new things, being who you truly are, it just supports more of this sort of opening to do so. It's not saying it will, it's just saying there's an opening with the sextile, and you can choose to walk through that door. Now, later in the week, this uh, Thursday through Saturday, when Venus goes over Uranus, I think there's another new chapter here with your self-expression. Fifth house is the house of fun, playfulness, creativity, uh, children, romance, um, anything that's close to your heart. And so this is all, I think you've learned a lot about this these past months. Um, There's been a lot to enjoy, a lot to connect to with this. But as you've been expressing yourself and enjoying these things close to your heart, you're finding that there's a lot of freedom with this. And particularly around Friday and Saturday when Venus goes over Uranus, you could be feeling quite free here, quite liberated to express yourself, to have a bit of fun, playfulness, maybe in those relationships actually. Because Venus does rule your seventh house, in the fifth house. Some of you this is about romance, but all in all just having a bit of you know, lighter energy in all your relationships and freedom in, in your relationships, freedom of being who you are, but also just the importance of literally having space in your relationships, freedom in them. And so there's a whole new chapter with this. And again, it's all part of these new beginnings that have been surfacing since uh, the later part of last week. And I think it's all very grounded too. It's stabilizing. That Saturn trines up to that Venus. So your relationships are getting stabilized the second half of the week. Yet freeing. It's a little bit of both there. But just in general, your self-expression being quite freeing, yet you feeling still very grounded. All right, so this weekend, Saturday, Sunday as well, the sun is going to be training up to Jupiter. So yeah, you could be some opportunities, maybe connect to some friends. Uh, maybe you're feeling quite aspired with Jupiter in your ninth house because that's where the opportunities have been to expand your her, to, to, to really look to the future, right, and cultivate aspirations and maybe be a part of things larger than yourself such as your friends your network circles community uh, but very good for those relationships in general uh, just being a bit open-minded and uh, free-spirited there now that's at the same time but mostly on sunday the sun does square up to neptune which suggests there might be some uncertainty as i was saying in the collective reading uh, this might have to do with home matters maybe family possibly health for some of you so anything you can do to, again, let go of everything that is outside of your control, I think you'll find this to be a, a very liberating time, very freeing time, but also helping you connect to, you know, the now moment and accept the now moment instead of, um, you know, fighting against it. All right, and uh, the weekend has that Mercury going into the seventh. So where I think it still is this week, where you're still thinking about your routine and your work and your day to day, maybe getting some things done with that. Um, you're going to likely notice your mind is shifting into more of the relationship sphere. I mean, it already has been emphasizing relationships, but your mind's going to go here. could be emphasizing uh, communication in your relationship, sharing of ideas, and more of the practical side of things. And the more willing you are to learn about relationships, it's just more of the fuel to this fire that is cultivating in this area. And then Mars does go into your eighth house. This will be mostly next week and for about the next month, but you'll have this... Uh, I think great motivation to really connect to what matters most in life. Maybe relationship related, but this is your ruler, right? So it's fundamentally you. You're just going to get deeper, open, more vulnerable. And some of you might be doing research, psychology, spirituality, um, learning more about things that are normally hidden in life. And um, but uh, just getting open and vulnerable in life is helping is going to be helping you transform, shed some old skin, break some past patterns to help you transform. This is your house, by the way for both of you, Scorpio and Afucus. All right, so I wish you all the very best. Thank you for watching. If you did find this video helpful, be sure to like, comment, and share down below. Uh, if you'd like a personal reading, there is a link down in the comment section for that, looking at the year ahead for your specific chart. So be sure to get in touch for that if you haven't yet done so. 
Uh, but wishing you all the very best. Thank you again for all of your support with this channel. And I will see you all next time. Sagittarius, welcome to your weekly forecast. So looking at this whole cycle, this whole lunar cycle that started last week, late last week, was in your sixth house of routine, of your work and your day-to-day -day activities. <clears throat> so there's likely already been a lot of motivation here past couple months with Mars in your sixth house. Uh, but now this whole new beginning is unfolding. And in the first quarter phase of this week, I think it's really good to challenge yourself to take some steps maybe towards whatever new has been starting to surface or is starting to surface early this week with that uh, now mars in the sixth is opposing up to saturn uh, on monday so this is about balance right i think saturn has been helping you for the past couple of years really get into the um, spiritual aspects of life maybe get your alone time learn more about yourself spiritually have a bit of peace in your life through acceptance and surrender and so maybe bringing in a bit of that you know, acceptance and surrender into your everyday experiences or some rest and relaxation into your everyday experiences and vice versa. Maybe bring in some of this routine into things like meditation or spiritual activities that can help you relax and stay nice and grounded with. But anyways, uh, this opposition is suggesting patience. And so likely where you're at here is with the routine or the work. So maybe being patient with that stuff, you're at this halfway point with the cycle with Mars and Saturn. So um, just seeing that things are do they do take time and just taking the nice and slow and steady grounded approach can help you get on the right side of this transit. But on Tuesday and Wednesday, that Mars sextiles Uranus, so it kind of lifts up here. And maybe there's something new and different with your home life, your family life, maybe your health for some of you can be a bit exciting and it can support maybe this work or whatever it is you're doing on a daily level here. Um, but the fourth house is really what's getting activated, I would say, Thursday through Saturday, the second half, uh, when Venus goes over Uranus to form up this grand trine uh, with the North Node, with Saturn, and um, stabilizing you, stabilizing your routine, stabilizing your home life, your family life, but at the same time, giving you a bit of freedom here as well. And I think that's really what the fundamental is, is that there's this whole new shift about having freedom with your home or your health or your personal life. Maybe making some changes there or something like that because Uranus has been transiting this area of your personal roots, foundations in life over the past eight years. And so now there's another step in the right direction about how you can really have freedom in this area. And, and I think there's gonna be a slight shift in that uh, freedom area for you regarding those things. And again, also I think regarding your work, your day-to-day -day activities, maybe even two possibly uh, friends and your network circles something new and different there beginning for the year now Saturday and Sunday the Sun from the sixth does trine up to your ruler Jupiter so you all could be feeling quite expressive over the weekend uh, maybe there are some continued op uh, opportunities with your career life or your productive life that's where the opportunities have been even though Jupiter's retrograde all that's gonna shift in June you've been in a reflective sort of mode the past few months and so you start to move forward when your ruler moves forward early June and uh, you know your career too with those opportunities that have been there uh, prior to the retrograde, prior to the past three or four months. But um, anyways, this weekend, yes, you're feeling, I think, a bit open. You're seeing the larger perspective on things. Maybe it's with your career, maybe it's with your work and there could be some opportunities there, possibly, depending on your personal chart. But that sun does square up to Neptune. And so at the same time, particularly around Sunday, maybe there's some uncertainty that you can let go of everything outside of your control with. Maybe it's pertaining to uh, communication. Maybe it's pertaining to learning, reading, writing, the communicative aspects of life. And through that surrender of what is outside of your control, really accept how things are in the now moment uh, will help you find that peace, which Neptune is helping you cultivate, helping us all cultivate collectively um, this weekend. So Mercury does go into your sixth house 
during the weekend. So adding to this routine and day-to-day -day stuff, this is where Mercury likes to be. Uh, your career could really be getting a dose of this, taking care of things, practical stuff, routine, even maybe even some of you connecting more with your relationships at work or meeting people through your day-to-day -day routine as well with Mercury ruling your seventh and your 10th house. But um, anyways, really good mental aptitude here for finding solutions to problems, organizing things in your life, self-improvement, uh, just adding to this new beginning there. Now, Mars does go into your seventh house at the very end of this week. You'll probably feel this mostly next week, but um, I think a lot of you over the next month will be very direct uh, involving your relationships, maybe more motivated in that area. And um, through that initiation, through that motivation, and the taking steps there, the action towards initiating whatever this relationship stuff is, maybe even getting deep with them as well, and, it, and you'll be expressing yourself through them at the same time in deep ways, <clears throat> uh, you're going to find that, yes, there is a lot of uh, drive and motivation to be unlocked to connect with others around you. All right, so Sagittarius, I hope you all have a fantastic week. Thank you for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, comment, and share it down below. Uh, if you'd like a personal reading, there is a link down in the comment section for that, looking at your specific chart for the next year. Um, if you haven't yet gotten in touch for that, be sure to do that. Um, but I wish you all the very best, and I will see you all next time. Capricorns, welcome to your weekly forecast. So let's look at this new moon, which took place late last week in your fifth house of self-expression. Uh, this week, a continuation of maybe taking some steps and challenging yourself towards cultivating some of these things that are close to your heart uh, that started anew, uh, maybe involving hobbies and interests for some of you. Others maybe involving this is the things you're passionate about you create. Others maybe romance in your life has started around this time. Or you're just feeling a bit more lighter and more playful in your relationships and maybe even children for some of you too spending time with children or your own children or children in the family things like that so this whole new beginning here about having a bit of uh, fun in your life is great to cultivate you got a lot of energy for this uh, a lot of motivation and drive i think a lot of you have been very direct in fact um, with your self-expression already and so you just got more uh, new beginnings unfolding for you in this area now, with that being said about Mars, Mars is going to be opposing up to Saturn, uh, where you have had that direct self-expression lately and maybe motivated towards those things that you're passionate about or close to your heart or having some fun. It is about balancing this with your aspirations, all right? Because over the past couple of years, your ruler in the 11th house has been emphasizing this stability of building your long-term aspirations in life. And so, yes, things are fun. Things are, you know, there's a lot of creative energy for you right now, but it's about also maintaining your responsibilities, maintaining the big picture and the long-term view about these future aspirations of yours. And, and I think, I think, I mean, it, you're Capricorn, it's your ruler Saturn. I think you are willing to be patient and grounded, especially if this is your, you know, ascendant sign or your sun sign or yeah, even your moon signs. But the point here is that Take it nice and slow. Take it one step at a time. You may be feeling very driven towards, yes, coming out of the gates with all this expression. That's great, but still maintaining those responsibilities, maintaining the big picture and doing the responsible thing uh, coming into the week, I think will be emphasized. And um, yeah, but you could be feeling motivated. You know, when Mars opposes up to the ruler, you could be feeling very motivated, very driven, some good action energy there. Now that Mars does sextile up to Uranus, so you could be feeling like there is this whole new shift about expressing your, your true self or mixing some things up, maybe trying some new things with hobbies, interests, or expressing yourself and you know things you find fun in life. And so um, that's just a bit of support for that. Maybe it's involving a bit of uh, practical stuff, learning, communication, reading, writing, um, trade, business, things like that, uh, because that's really being emphasized the second half of the week when Venus goes over Uranus. 
particularly around Friday and Saturday. But even Thursday, that Venus trines up to Saturn, your ruler. So you all are feeling probably quite, quite, uh, quite good generally. I mean, with Venus, it's feeling good. It's looking good. The relationships could be supportive. Again, your self-expression is supportive at this time. Um, your career and your productive life is supportive also. Venus ruling that. So, but generally, I think with the trend of Venus, you're just feeling a bit of flow and it's easy to connect, generally speaking. And then there's this whole new chapter a little later, Friday, Saturday, uh, involving this, what has been, I think, already continuous new beginnings with all this practical stuff of the third house. But now another new beginning about freedom here with us. And I think a lot of it is about freedom of your self expression, freedom of these things that you find fun or close to your heart. And um, also a new change probably with your career, in fact, for a lot of you, um, with Venus ruling your 10th, how you can have some freedom in your career um, in a yearly sense with this aspect. All right, so Saturday, Sunday, the sun does trine up to Jupiter. So really good weekend, I think, for thinking big, uh, maybe tapping into your adventurous spirit a little bit, some self-expression unfolding, a bit of that creative energy, which is very nice. Uh, but at the same time, the sun does square up to Neptune, so there might be some uncertainty. Maybe it's about the financial material stuff or investment stuff for some of you. So anything you can do to let go of everything outside of your control with that or anything you do feel like is uncertain during Sunday, I think you'll find that that's a very constructive way of working with this because Neptune's been helping you have more faith and trust with the material aspects of things there in the second house. Now this weekend, um, Mercury is going into your fifth house. So I think you'll start to be communicating more of the self-expression um, I think up until the weekend, you're still probably uh, maybe thinking about the past, maybe home life, family life, your health, things of that nature. Uh, but as you shift into the weekend, probably just more of the communicative side of the self-expression or maybe getting into the practical side, or whatever these things are that are close to your heart here. And that Mars does go into your sixth house of routine, mostly next week, but for the next month, starting early next week or this weekend, you could be feeling that there is this um, now um, motivation towards your routine or your work and you're driven here and you're motivated here and that's a very positive force to work with uh, moving forward all right so capricorns hope you found this video helpful uh, if you did please like comment and share it down below to support this channel and i do appreciate all of you who have uh, supported the channel uh, regardless however long you've been with uh, mtz but uh, yeah, wishing you all the very best. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. There is a link to my readings that I offer down in the comment section. So uh, if you haven't had a personal reading yet, do consider that. Uh, they're very powerful. They look at the year ahead for you. But um, yeah, wishing you all the very best. Thank you again, and I'll see you all next time. Aquarius, welcome to your weekly forecast. So looking first at this new moon, you have a new moon that took place late last week in your fourth house of home, of family, of your health, and the past, and your roots, and any foundations in your life. So it's an excellent week now to continue to cultivate these things, maybe take some steps towards cultivating some of these, whatever these new beginnings are, and uh, challenge yourself with it. You know, take the steps, implement it, and see what you can uh, cultivate. So with that being said, you know, I think a lot of you have already been more motivated towards home stuff or spending more time at home. A lot of your energy levels are at a low right now. They're best channeled into more personal things, domestic things, things like that at this time uh, with Mars and the sun at the bottom of the chart. But um, that Mars is going to be opposing up to your ruler Saturn coming into the week. So I think there's a bit of patience needed. Maybe it's involving some of the career stuff in your life or the productive stuff. 
uh, understanding that maybe some of this stuff is taking time or maybe it's involving some of the home stuff, but it's all about balance, right? It's about balance that, yes, it's about being patient with the career stuff and even with this too, patience with whatever might be unfolding here involving your home. And so if you're thinking long-term, if you're thinking big picture, I think that's fantastic. And you can find this to be very grounding. It could be your health as well there with that. Now that Mars does sextile up to Uranus. So Tuesday, Wednesday, there is a bit of opening with some of this. Uh, maybe all of a sudden, or because sometimes it's unexpected with Uranus, but just a little later, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, there is this sort of uh, freedom or, or this opening to have a bit more freedom uh, in your life. Maybe it is involving your career and maybe it is involving finances or investments and um, and the home stuff maybe even too. So the, the second house of, of finance and investments and your material life, this is what's really been activated lately this past many months with all this energy in Pisces. And now with Venus going over Uranus, um, here around Friday and Saturday, the second half of the week, uh, there could be another new shift in this direction. You seeing some more opportunities here, maybe <clears throat> you liberating this area, you know, seeing where you can make some changes perhaps in this area so that your finances do reflect what you truly want in life, you know, do reflect your excitements um, and that kind of thing. Could even be, again, changes with your home life or your health, maybe feeling quite free spirited there, which is very good. And just all now stabilized with those things. I think with your ruler trining up to Venus, particularly Friday and, or excuse me, around Thursday, um, there is this stability about your home life and your financial life and all of this. And, and that's it's a very grounding force for you, actually. Uh, but with that being said, you also could be feeling good. You could be looking good. Um, Beauty is emphasized with, with Venus. Relationships is emphasized. You get some support there as well. And so there's just a bit of flow, a bit of connectivity. It's just easy to connect when you have Venus trying your ruler Saturn. So that's the second half of the week, very constructive. Still an excellent time for mixing things up, trying new things, and uh, continuing to cultivate this, uh, this personal life stuff, which is what's unfolding for you here this part of the year. Now, the weekend does have that sun trining up to Jupiter and, and squaring up to Neptune. So there is a bit of maybe opportunity to get deeper this weekend as you have had opportunities with Jupiter in the eighth house. Maybe it's involving shared resources or something like that. But yeah, really good weekend for connecting the watery aspects of life, getting deeper, spending time at home maybe or with family. <clears throat> and um, anything that does involve psychology or spirituality, um, deeper stuff, which is the eighth house. Now, that being said, around Sunday in particular, maybe there's some uncertainty about some things with that square to Neptune. Maybe it's about you. Maybe it's about who you are. Maybe it's about what you want in life. And so as present as you can possibly be with this, is going to help you ground this, uh, be present, because with the square to the Neptune, all, all of us collectively this weekend, you know, there the natural inclination for us is to, you know, project, is to like try to figure it out. Like, what is, who am I? Where am I going? What is this? And so that's what creates the confusion. So as present as you can be and as accepting as you can be of where you are in the, in the now moment, um, you're going to find this is a very constructive weekend for bringing in a bit more peace and acceptance in your life. Now that Mercury does go into your fifth house. So over the weekend, you could be feeling that um, you're feeling a bit more communicative, maybe at home or with family. Uh, maybe a lot of you are thinking more about learning more about your health even too, and your past, maybe reflecting on the past, that kind of thing. So Mercury gives you the tangible, practical stuff with what is, again, unfolding for you in this area. But up until then, you know, up until the, the weekend, you have Mercury in your third house, which is excellent stuff for reading, writing, practical stuff business, trade, anything that does involve uh, synergy in life. Now that Mars does go into your fifth house, this will be mostly next week. So you could be feeling like uh, maybe this weekend subtly, but really for the next month now, uh, very direct with your self-expression, maybe more motivated to have a bit of fun in your life, um, creative energy, expressive, um, lighter, fun, playfulness, that kind of thing could be a very motivating force for you. But we'll talk about that more so next week. So Aquarius this week, the emphasis is new beginnings with your foundations, right? Home, family, health are some examples. Balancing this with patience with this bigger picture stuff, whether it's career or productive stuff in your life, balancing the two there. Um, but then the second half of the week, this whole new shift about your resources, your inner resources, but also your outer resources as well which already has been emphasized, but more freedom in that area. 
and then um, yeah then this uh, weekend still a continuation of more positive support with the um, home family and health area all right so Aquarius hope you have a fantastic week thank you for all of your support with this channel uh, if you'd like a personal reading there's a link down in the comment section for that looking at your specific chart for the next year very powerful if you haven't yet gotten one do check that out but uh, wish you all the very best and i will see you all next time Pisces, welcome to your weekly forecast. So let's have a look at this new moon, which started late last week. Uh, it was in your third house of communication, of practical learning, of reading, writing, sharing, business, trade, um, anything that's about synergy in your life and learning in your life and practical things. So it's an excellent week to challenge yourself with all of that because we are going to be in the first quarter phase, which is about taking steps, implementing some of that stuff. I think you already are very motivated and have been motivated with whatever this is for you this past um, couple months. Uh, so using that motivation is excellent. We do have Mercury coming in here at the end of the week as well, giving you even good mental and practical aptitude. But uh, coming into the week on Monday, uh, that Mars is going to be opposing up to Saturn. So there is this bit of patience needed Sunday of last week, Monday of this week coming into it. Uh, I'm seeing the big picture because where there is a lot of motivation and drive with whatever this stuff might be, for you. Um, Saturn's saying that there's a much larger picture here, and maybe it's about being patient towards uh, the more expansive stuff, maybe being patient towards um, adventure, travel, being patient towards higher learning, university, spirituality, and, and really opening your mind to what is possible, but in a way that's grounded. And so anything you can do that is taking it one step at a time, seeing this in even a yearly sense, because in a year and a quarter from now, so like about the middle to later part of 2017, Mars is going to be coming back to that conjunction with Saturn. And so this is suggesting that there's a shift taking place. And between now and then, yes, you can certainly cultivate these things that you're motivated towards, but maybe it's taking some time. And that's okay because it's going to be much more stable and grounded because of it. So um, so that's good coming into the week with Mars sextiling up to Uranus uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Does suggest that there could be some freedom though at the same time with these motivations, seeing things in a new way, in a different way. Uh, maybe it is, again, involving some of this practical stuff here, um, even to involving finances as well, maybe an opportunity or something new and different there presenting itself. But um, where I think a lot of this is, is really being emphasized the second half of the week is with this Uranus, because Venus is going to go over Uranus in your sign in Pisces, um, where you've already had a lot of energy, a lot of you've learned a lot about yourself, where you're headed, what your goals are, things like this. Uh, the past many months, few months. Uh, but now Venus goes over Uranus, particularly here uh, Friday and Saturday, where there's this new shift of you and your values and who you are and where you're headed and what you want, how you can really be who you truly are. And maybe even to some new different things with these ideas or practical stuff or communication or whatever that third house stuff is. Connecting with your peers and siblings, maybe too, for some of you. But um, it's all about change. It's all about being who you are. It's freedom there. It's shifting. It's also very stabilizing because that Saturn does trine up to that Venus and Uranus, giving you support here with this. And uh, yeah, just another step in the right direction about your goals, who you are, being who you truly are, and uh, being, you know, implementing freedom in your life in general. Now, over the weekend, the sun does trine up to Jupiter and squares up to Neptune from the third. So uh, particularly around Saturday, maybe there is some opportunity to connect with some relationships in your life or a relationship. 
maybe a bit helpful there, open-minded. So utilize that. That's a very supportive energy. Um, but then around Sunday, there's also this uncertainty collectively. And this might have to do with maybe some things on a deep level spiritually about you, maybe about where you can have more peace and tranquility in your life. Maybe it's about yourself, you know, very deep spiritual or psychological level. So anything you can do to release anything that is outside of your control, you know, that you don't have immediate control over, you can release, let go of. Um, I think you'll find this to be very liberating and a very constructive way of working with it because that's what Neptune's helping us all do over the weekend is to have a bit more acceptance in our life in the now moment for how things are and that can help us be at peace with that and with life in general. Now, uh, there's some shifts, right? Mercury, yep, as I said, going into your third house over the weekend, probably getting more practical because that's certainly unfolding for you. It's Mercury's house, it's practicality with practicality. Uh, really getting into the tangible stuff. You could even find you're communicating more in your relationships or your relationships are more about practical things or learning, communication. Um, and then also Mars goes into your fourth house of home, family, and your health. You'll probably feel this more next week, but there is this uh, drive now towards the more intrinsic things in life, like family, um, you know, personal stuff, like maybe spending some time at home, but that's the way to unlock your energy. So your energy levels might be at a bit of a low these next month, couple months, with all this energy down here at the bottom of your chart, Mars and the Sun in particular. Uh, but it's better channeled into, I think, personal things, if you're guided to. You know? if, if you feel like there's some things involving home, family, or health that you're motivated towards, you can put some energy into. Uh, I, I personally think, in, in terms of what the astrology is showing, uh, could be a very good channel for that. But of course, listen to your inner guidance. This astrology is only meant to confirm what you already know to be true. So hopefully I've done that for you. Hopefully this has confirmed some things for you, Pisces. Hope you all have a fantastic week. Uh, thank you for all of your likes, comments, and shares with this channel. If you'd like a personal reading, there is a link down in the comment section for that, looking at the year ahead for your specific chart. If you haven't yet gotten a reading, be sure to check that out. Um, wishing you all the very best, and I'll see you all next time.